Welcome back to another episode of What's Up Prof. Welcome, Walter. Hi, Martin. We've made it. This is the last one in the series Understanding Pope Francis. Yes. This will be the final bookend to put this series together. So let's open with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to have discussed this whole series of the seat. And we ask that you help us in this last one and enlighten our minds with the Holy Spirit, that we can use this knowledge to further it to the glorification of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now we have to pull it together. So again, we'll be doing a little bit of history and bringing it to the present time. So I think this one should bring us right up to where we are now yes. in the stream of time. So we've titled it Understanding Pope Francis, Laudato Si, Gaia Worship, The Great Reset, Nothing New. Because people think, you know, this is now because of the crisis in the climate and mm -hmm. the crisis in this, that this is all developing brand new right now. No, this is old planning that is coming to fruition. Correct. They want to give it the title, the new normal. But this has been planned. Long, long time long ago. Time. So let's start off with this verse in Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9. The thing that has been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. I think that'll sum it up, right? Correct. So let's go back to history. Go back a couple of years and let's see where we can find the root of the planning that is now coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. UNSED, United Nations Conference Environment Development. UNSED, also called the Earth Summit, was an unveiling of the philosophical shift from the Judeo-Christian worldview to Gaia. The program of action called Agenda 21 is 297 pages long and a second related document, Global Assessment, is over 1,100 pages long. Together these documents contain an agenda that can only be called evil as the implementation of the action items will turn freedom into bondage and life into misery as all of what we know today will be replaced by a planned electronic society in which our only value will be to produce. This was written in 1998, right? Mm -hmm. Long before any yeah. of this appeared. Even, even that was in the beginning of the electronic Correct. internet era. In feudalistic times, only the king and nobility owned land and had freedom. So too, under United Nations rule, feudalistic times will return and the lights of freedom will go out. With the adoption of sustainable development at UNSED, man was demoted to the same level as a plant or an animal. So this whole question of sustainable development mm -hmm. and earth-related summits was something that took place in the stream of history. And now the modern world, the scientific world, the political world and the religious world under Pope Francis are pulling it together. Yes. Now, Martin, it is so sad to me that churches today will be so involved in the sustainable development and climate change agenda yeah. that they will hold summits for the youth mm -hmm. to concentrate on these issues when the world 
is standing before the second coming of Christ Correct. and they are involved in this kind of thing, even within our own ranks. Now it's very sad. It's very sad. Because like you just mentioned, our focus is to now to get people ready for the second coming, not trying to educate them on how to save this and save that around you. It's based on a lie. Exactly. It's based on pagan philosophy. So if we have a look at some of the the issues, they had certain goals. Millennium end goals were first uh, prepared for the year 2015. So high-level events on the Millennium Development Goals, United Nations Headquarters, 2008, Media Advisory, World Leaders to Boost Action to End Extreme Poverty at the United Nations High-Level Event, 25 September. Now, this issue of end extreme poverty, is this a song that Pope Francis loves to sing? Oh, yes, definitely. So it's an old song. Mm -hmm. So let's just go back in history, Martin, and look at this Gaia hypothesis. Yeah. Now, according to John Verne, James Lovelock formulated the Gaia hypothesis, which today is known as the worship of the earth. It propagates holism, which perverts and inverts Genesis 1. Holism is evolution at its finest. Man evolves to the point where he is equal with the earth, the plants and the animals, and the environment is elevated to a position of dominance over man. This is earth worship. Yep. It's also pantheism. Mm -hmm. And it inverts Genesis chapter 1 which is the very beginning of the blueprint for humanity. Yes. Any religion that inverts Genesis 1 is paganism. The only way to change the laws of every country and to take control is to make the environment the focal point. Eventually the world will be ruled by global governance partnership between business, the private sector, and government, which is fascism. That's the definition of fascism. Now this comes from Jones Verne, Prince Charles, the Sustainable Prince, published in 1998. It's a very interesting book. Well, it's very spot on. It's very prophetic, <laughs> one could almost say, right? So when you look at something from a Christian perspective and you really start studying what is happening in the occult world, you cannot but notice that everything in the world is an inversion. Mm -hmm. That's why I call the devil the master of reversal. So if God puts a hierarchy into the world, the devil will turn it around. Mm -hmm. If God puts the parents above the children in terms of training, the world will turn it round and make child yes. law higher than parental right, right? So that's just the way it works. Gender reversal mm -hmm. and, of course, environment humanity reversal. In the Bible, yes. man is put in charge of the environment. Yep. In the reversal, the environment takes precedence and man has to be subjugated to its rule. Yes. That's paganism. And the champion of it is the papacy. Yes. Laudato Si is nothing other than this pagan agenda. 100%. What I also enjoyed here is the only way to change the laws of every country. Yes is to, contact, to get this environment thing. You need a universal problem. Mm -hmm. If you can use a universal pandemic, and if you can use a universal climate catastrophe, then you have everything in place. Uh, are we capable of manipulating the weather? Well, yes. Uh, does it say in the spirit of prophecy that uh, the evil world has studied the laws of nature okay. and knows how to manipulate the weather? Yes. yes, Satan is using his agents to manipulate weather for sure. And he does it himself sometimes. Correct. What did he do in the time of Job? Yes. What swept away the belongings and the family of Job? A mighty storm, right? Well, mighty storm. Yes. 
So this is ancient history. So let's have a look at the definition of sustainable development. Development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. So there are two concepts here. Needs as it pertains to the world's poor to which overriding priority should be given. And secondly, the idea of limitations imposed by technology on the environment's ability to meet present and future needs. At a minimum, sustainable development must not endanger the natural systems that support life on Earth. Atmosphere, water, soils, living beings. Now, the concept of sustainable development in itself is not a bad concept. No. Because you don't want to destroy resources without being able to supply future resources. Correct, correct. But the way in which it is done is fascinating because who owns the mega corporations that have destroyed the ecosystem? Rome. The Knights of Malta? Yes. And their associates? E eventually it goes back to Rome, yes. It goes back to Rome. Who controls the economies? So this license, this free-for-all for destruction, comes from a particular source that is now saying we need this and that and the other. Mm. So they're always hiding in the background. It's like when the Pope is always emphasizing we have to look after the poor and all of this. It's not, ba it's not a bad concept. The Bible is full of it. But the problem is they make that, they put that in front. They make that the main issue on, uh, that's going on. on and when on the earth. Bible speaks about the poor, it does speak about the physical poor. But largely, it's speaking about those that are poor in spirit. In other words, that are depressed. Now, you can be very rich, and you can be very depressed, and you can be trodden upon. I mean, in the last one that we looked at, mm. we saw some of these stars, and we mentioned Britney Spears and all of these. Uh, they are not happy. They are poor in spirit. Yes. They need to be reached with the gospel of salvation as much as anybody else. Correct. So when we see these people with all their hand signatures and all this symbolism, Correct. we mustn't want to uh, ostracize them. Your heart must go out to them like you Jesus must, is. You must try and reach them. Do you know, Martin, I've had occasions when in my audience there were film stars that realized that they had been duped and they changed their ways. Actors, mm. opera singers, uh, many, many people that have realized what this all led to. You know, we're off the topic now. We're in our previous topic. But uh, it's fascinating to me that they use such illustrious names, mm. the Order of St. John. I mean, if you, if you want to choose two of the saints that are probably invoked the most by Catholicism, then it's St. John, referring to John the Baptist, yeah. and St. Paul. Yes. Everything, it's St. Paul's Cathedral, St. Paul's this, Paul that, the other, and John, 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 no matter where you turn. And you think, well, this is wonderful. Ask yourself the question, what was the message of John the Baptist? The message of John the Baptist is what we are talking about Correct. here, which is the exact opposite of what they are doing. Yes, preparing for the second coming. He was for the preparing for the first coming. Correct. But that is the name they invoke. Mm. The message of St. Paul, the absolute beauty of the plan of salvation as explained by Paul in the Bible, the atonement, what it meant, the high priestly role of Jesus Christ, is that portrayed in what they are saying or the exact opposite? The exact opposite. Now I've often thought, Martin, why do they like those two names the most? Mm. Because if you go into the heart of these occult societies, one of their... Uh, punishments for breaking the oath yes. is beheading. Mm -hmm. 
So they make beheading one of the parts of their ritual. And both John the Baptist and Paul were beheaded. Yes. So when they're talking about these, are they celebrating what they stood for? Mm. Obviously not. No. Or are they celebrating a victory, victory of evil over them by beheading them? Yep. So we have to note that nothing is as it seems. Exactly. Because if they really were following John the Baptist, and if they really were following the teachings of Paul, they would not be doing what they are doing. No. Let's get back to this. Agenda 21 sets up the global infrastructure needed to manage, count, and control all the world's assets, pastures, rangeland, farmer's field, oceans, inland waterways, marine environment, marine life, cities, housing, sewer, solid waste, methods of production, air pollution, biotechnology, every aspect of living, farming, production and manufacturing, research and medicine, etc., et along with you and me. Is this what is happening in the world? 100%. Which philanthropist owns the greatest quantity of pastures and farmland in the world today? Well, because he's not British, we can't call him Sir, but that will be Bill Gates. But he was knighted. But he was knighted. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. So if you uh, grab all the means in a particular area, then you create mega corporations and you create mega control. It's interesting that um, also the world's assets, with whom did Pope Francis have that big gathering a few months ago? Correct. With all the big businesses and, and, the and MasterCard and all these big financing houses. Correct. And they are controlling every aspect and they will take away your land and you will own nothing. As a result of advanced technology through computers and satellites, the Geographic Information System, GIS, the management, count and control is being done. Number one, the Convention on Biological Diversity, which puts holism into practice. Now we said in a previous one, that we will have all of these issues. We will have a pandemic, we'll have a climate catastrophe, and then we'll have a biodiversity yeah. catastrophe. Now, it's interesting to me that at the last G7, biodiversity was made prominent. So already, they are bringing yes. it in. Secondly, the Convention on Desertification, the Convention on Climate Change. These conventions will change the freedoms we have known and our ability to choose what we think is best for our family and businesses. Written in 1998, Martin. Nothing new under the sun. Nothing new. This is like reading it in a paper f of today. Yeah, we have to go to the history to show people yeah. that they're being led by the nose. This is a plan long time coming. Yes. Then you have the Earth Charter Initiative is a declaration of fundamental principles for building a just, sustainable and peaceful global society for the 21st century. It sounds like Pope Francis speaking. <laughs> yes. Created by global civil society, endorsed by thousands of organizations and institutions, the Charter is not only a call to action, but a motivating force inspiring change the world over. This is a pagan agenda. Yes. This is a pagan agenda. It is directly opposed to the word of God. In 1992, Morris Strong was the Secretary General of the historic United Nations UNCET Earth Conference in Rio. And he said, the real goal of the Earth Charter is that it will in fact become like the Ten Commandments. So I wonder, whose Ten Commandments, Martin? The Bibles or the Popes? Well, all of this leads back to Rome, so definitely not the Bible. Definitely not. And then Mikhail Gorbachev said, Do not do unto the environment 
of others what you do not want done to your own environment. My hope is that this charter will be a kind of Ten Commandments, a Sermon on the Mount that provides a guide for human behavior towards the environment in the next century. In 1997, that mm, was said. Mikhail Gorbachev, president of Russia. Yes, huh? coming out of a communist yeah. atheist <laughs> regime. It's interesting how they want to replace the standard of the Bible with another standard. Yes, and then they even use biblical language, Sermon on the Mount, but they totally op um, opposed to that. Absolutely. <laughs> then he hinted, Morris Strong, at the overtly pagan agenda proposed for a future Earth charter when in his opening address to the Rio conference he said, it is the responsibility of each human being today to choose between the force of darkness and the force of light. Now we've heard this from the mouths of presidents in many speeches of late. Yes. We must choose light and not darkness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, who was the light bearer? Lucifer. Now we did that one on the knighthoods. Yes. And we saw the issue of the Rain Man. Yes. We didn't even talk about movies no. like Rain Man, etc., yes. etc. Et but I think enough was said. Notice Alice A. Bailey and Blavatsky before her use these terms often. Their writings state that the force of darkness are those who adhere to the outdated Judeo-Christian faith, those who continue along their separative path of the one true God. That's outdated modern. Light has to become darkness. Mm -hmm. Darkness has to become light. We have to have a reversal. And Blavatsky makes no bones about it that the source of light is Lucifer and the source of darkness is Jesus Christ. And this becomes very dangerous when you go into what's happening in our day. Because there's a lot of talks about movements and people saying there needs to come this great awakening and that all this evil has to be done away with. What is this evil? The Judeo-Christian culture? But even if you got the other side, if you look at the way Blavatsky was talking, you got white and black magic. Black magic can also be evil. White magic seems to be good, but it's still magic. Correct. And that's where the danger lies about a lot of this that's happening, like the QAnon movement. Correct. It looks like they're going to do it for the benefit of God. But in the meantime, it's another God. another God. It's like white magic. You know what? The only form of Christianity that will be allowed to be part of this new world order will be a Christianity that has replaced the norms and standards of the Bible with this Gaia hypothesis environmental uh, issue. That's, That's why we must avoid it like the plague. Now is the time to preach the gospel, not to climb onto a papal train leading you to perdition. And no leader that will become president in the near future will not be part of the new world order. Correct. Even if it seems that he is not. Correct. Because nothing is as it seems. Nothing is as it seems. Now, you know, if you go back to the book of Daniel, then you'll see what the issues were there. I mean, the book of Daniel is a beautiful book. It shows you exactly what the issues will be. You will have to bow down to a system of worship that is contrary to the Bible. Diet will be involved in a very specific way. Music will be involved. Mm. When you hear the sound of the flute, the dead, the dead, the dead, music will be involved. We see all of this in the world today. And this part of come out of be separate is not going to be acceptable. So the force of light, Lucifer, in their view, is the inclusive New Age doctrine of a pagan, pantheistic New World religion. In the New Age of Aquarius, there will be no room for the force of darkness and separativeness. 
We must therefore transform our attitudes and adopt a renewed respect for the superior laws of divine nature. That's natural law. Mm-hmm. We've shown <laughs> We've shown yeah. that all along. Strong finished with unanimous applause from the crowd. Quoted in Joan Verne's Prince Charles, the Sustainable Prince. So there you have the full catastrophe. Paganism takes the place of Christianity. I can see it in the nations. I can see it in the laws. Yes. I don't, it doesn't matter whether we're looking at our own country mm-hmm. or whether we're looking at the United States of America exactly. or whether we're looking at Europe. It doesn't matter. Everywhere it is exactly the same. Then the Humanist Manifesto states quite clearly, in order that religious humanism may be better understood, we, the undersigned, desire to make certain affirmations which we believe the fact of our contemporary life demonstrate. We therefore affirm the following. First, religious humanists regard the universe as self-existing and not created. Second, Humanism believes that man is a part of nature and that he has emerged as the result of a continual process which is called evolution. Is the papacy for or against evolution? For. Wasn't it the Jesuit that introduced the Big Bang Theory? Correct. Man is at last becoming aware that he is alone responsible for the realization of the world of his dreams that he has within himself the power for this achievement. He must set intelligence and will to the task. This comes from the Humanist Manifesto. Now, question. Didn't Pope Paul VI say exactly the same at Vatican II? Yes. <laughs> Perfectly. The same. So there's nothing new under the sun no. here. For this great achievement, man utilizing the resources and the laws of nature, yet without divine aid, can take full credit. Similarly, for his shortcomings, he must take full responsibility. Humanism assigns to man nothing less than the task of being his own savior and redeemer. Didn't the Second Vatican Council set the word of God aside yes. and proclaim themselves their own redeemers and included atheists and any pagan religion whether it is earth worship or whatever into its system of worship definitely all right so this is basically humanism in action Mm -hmm. and many years ago in 2008 already they were talking about outrageous green laws gone bad. Are we protecting nature or ruining lives? Green laws and regulation risk energy crisis. I mean, we've gone through all of those. Mm. And we are now at the point where presidents close down pipelines. Yes. Destroy jobs. And all in the name of the environment. We are on the brink of very interesting times. Relating to the environment. And uh, in Canada, (laughs) they asked the question, many years ago, has Canada gone mad? Because if you left your car idling, you could be slapped with a fine because you were wasting non-renewable energy. That's another thing. And as we can see now, laws were implemented worldwide for climate in preparation. Yes. So all this talk mm-hmm. is already legislated. How for. many countries are paying carbon tax? All of them. You can't buy a car without paying that tax. Correct. It's implemented in your fuel levy. Yes. The tax levy. Yes. It's everywhere already. So you don't even if you don't realize it, you've been part of this climate and environment thing for a very long time. And that tax fuels and funds the United Nations. Correct. So, welcome to oneworld.net. We bring together the latest news and views of 1,600 organizations, climate justice for this, that, and the other, global food crisis. All of these organizations are involved, and all of these organizations and confederacies are all probably under the rule of papal knights. Yes. 
So here, let's bring it to the present day, having gone through this history sweep. Yeah. March the 3rd, 2021, world needs equivalent of pandemic lockdown every two years to meet the Paris carbon emission goals. So we need a lockdown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, I just saw a video on the effect of lockdown. Yes. How many, it was Sky News, I think. Sky News Australia, yeah. That said, how many people are dying and committing suicide as a consequence? Human life is of no value. Yeah, they've actually made a study now yes. that more people perished from lockdowns than it was saving. Correct. The dramatic drop in global carbon emissions seen during the early days of the pandemic and global shutdowns would need to be matched every two years for the rest of the decade in order to meet the goals outlined in the Paris Climate Agreement, according to a new study. Though the authors don't recommend that the world rely on lockdowns to help battle climate change. But they're talking about it. Yes. So let's listen to what the President of the United States has to say on the issue. Today I'm pleased to announce a team that will lead my administration's ambitious plan to address the existential threat of our time, <coughs> climate change. Folks, we're in a crisis. Just like we need to be a unified nation in response to COVID-19, we need a unified national response to climate change. And from this crisis, from these crises, I should say, we need to seize the opportunity to build back and build back better than we were before. A unified national response. It's involuntary, that's the one thing we know. What does it mean? Well, we're learning that a World Health Organization staffer has written a report saying that a climate lockdown could be called for. It's like a COVID lockdown, a climate lockdown. The climate activists were, first of all, jealous when the COVID lockdowns happened. They were beside themselves saying, how is this happening? Everyone from Greta Thunberg to John Kerry, UN officials. And then they started saying, we need to follow this. If we can shut down for a virus, we can shut down for climate. And that's what we're seeing. There's even academics in Australia proposing adding climate change to death certificates. And Bill Gates has said the death toll will be greater. So they're following every step of the way. And it's not just, you know, a, a professor here or someone in academia. We have a major UK report coming out. We have an international agency report that came out uh, calling for essentially the same type of lockdowns, everything from restrictions on your thermostat to restrictions of moving. Uh, you know, you can only fly in a climate emergency when it's, quote, morally justifiable. You know, kind of like a lockdown, you have to justify going to the store for essential services. They're going after freedom of movement. They're going after private car ownership. They're going after uh, everything it means to be a free person and turning it over to the administrative state. We're not going to be able to have the freedoms we used to have. In the UK, they proposed uh, CO2 ration cards that the government or employers would monitor your CO2 levels, you know, your energy use, your travel, the type of car you drive. If you exceed a level, you pay penalties. If you're under, you get credits. This is the world. A CO2 budget for every man, woman, and child on the planet has been proposed by a German climate advisor. Anything is possible. Chuck Schumer is urging Biden to declare a national climate emergency. Just like a blue state governor, he could have emergency powers. Martin, do you think God realized what he was doing when he breathed into humanity the breath of life? Didn't he realize that they were going to exude carbon dioxide? <laughs> 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 Maybe we should all wear a little monitor measuring how much carbon dioxide you breathe out. Don't worry, I think that will be in the future on your mask. It'll be a, an attachment to the mask? Mm, your mm. carbon dioxide meter. And if it, if it goes too high, what happens? You get a fine <laughs> or you have to stop breathing for a week? You're on breath <laughs> lockdown? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can laugh. We can but, laugh, but this is serious. But this is actually what they're it doing, is, right? It is really like this guy just mentioned this is not just some um, two conspiracy theorists sitting talking about this this is what's happening in governments now absolutely so let's just look at one of pope francis's earlier statements made in 2015 already 
where he wrapped up his South American tour and he called for a new economic and ecological world order. Again, nothing new under the sun. Mm. I mean, you know, he's living in Ecclesiastes, it seems to me. So the goods of the earth are meant for everyone and however much someone may parade his property or his social mortgage, Francis said, the tapping of natural resources which are so abundant in Ecuador must not be concerned with the short-term benefits. He's going back to Thomas Aquinas. It's just interesting to see now. We've had the political side of this whole climate thing and now we've got the religious side with Pope right. Francis. Yes, and, and how this all fits together. fits together. And it's always a negation of the Bible. Mm. So let's jump to a more modern one of his, 2020. Pope Francis called for a just economic world order as he stands with Zimbabwe. Now the interesting thing is, Zimbabwe was quite a prosperous Mm, country. It, it was the bread basket of Africa. It was the bread basket of Africa. Now it's the most poverty struck basket in Africa. And who was ruling it? A Jesuit. Yes. A Jesuit. And uh, they managed to destroy it. And it's interesting that the Pope bowed down to him. The only one. The only political leader that he bowed down to because he was an older Jesuit than himself. But the interesting point to me is how they allow for this destruction, mm -hmm. are rewarded for destroying, because they need to destroy it in order to get their new system. Yeah, uh, Mugabe was also knighted. I think he might have been stripped of it later, but I mean he was also knighted. Only for yeah. the public consumption. Mm -hmm. So you know, sometimes people say. Uh, you know, all of this destruction is because of incompetence by some people or the other. No, this is planned. Correct. So then you have the Laudato Sea goals. And uh, I mean, if you look at them, they, they are all encompassing. They encompass education, ecological spirituality, community engagement, ecological economics. I mean, the list is just endless and the response to the cry of the earth now when you read this uh, laudato si it is a pagan document it is not much different from what unsaid produced at the united nations the gaia hypothesis and he starts off with this canticle of saint francis that reminds us of this beautiful mother who opens her arms to embrace us mm -hmm. praise be to you my Lord, through our sister, Mother Earth. This is earth worship. It is, it's ridiculous. And this coming from supposedly Christian Pope. Exactly. It is nothing other than the humanistic agenda of the Gaia hypothesis, who sustains and governs us and who produces various fruit with colored flowers and herbs. Classic reversal. Mm. The provider is God, yes. and he receives the, the honor and the glory. It is he that makes the seed. It is he that makes the seed grow. Correct. It is he that produces the seed and the fruit. Here, the earth is worshipped, mm. and God is ignored. Yeah. And that's exactly what they want. And therefore, this pagan philosophy by this pagan pope is being presented to the world as the model for yes. everything that has to take place. Every country must implement Ladao to see. I don't even want to read it. Can no. I skip to the you next slide go. before <laughs> I have a nausea attack? <laughs> so it's got to be linked to the common good. Always. And we saw in that quote from the Roman Catholic Catechism that the common good is always linked to? Sunday. Sunday. You cannot separate you cannot. them. So the common good has become global and nations, it's a very strong word, must mm -hmm. associate for their own benefit, Francis said, noting that some nations today have a spirit of opposition rather than cooperation. The Pope called building the common good of humanity a necessary and essential element for the world balance. Let us not forget that the common good is always linked to Sunday. Sunday. 
Pope Francis said that when a supranational common good is clearly identified, as in the case of climate change or human trafficking, it necessitates a special legal authority capable of facilitating solutions. So we need a world body yes. to make sure that everybody adheres. Now, Martin, countries that do not adhere to the pandemic mm -hmm. measures, mm -hmm. are they punished? Yes. Leaders that do not adhere to it, are they punished? They not only punished, they vanished. They vanish. Yes, they vanish. We've had a couple of African leaders vanish. Now we're now deep into we're deep, into, whoa, into, we're deep <laughs> into conspiracy <laughs> theories. All healthy men in their early sixties or late fifties. So whether they disappeared naturally or not, it is interesting that they were all anti the agenda. Mm. Let's leave it at that. And what's also interesting to note here is that he says it has become global, this common good. Yes. That means the plan is in place. Correct. They're ready to. Correct. Go and ahead. if it is always linked to Sunday, will the Sunday be part of it? Definitely. So here's the Independent Catholic News, and it says, Jubilee for the Earth, looking to Laudato Si Week. Now, week has a cycle, doesn't it, Martin? Yes. So Jubilee for the Earth is the theme of autumn season of creation, and a creation Sunday in September will be introduced. Jubilee for the Earth is a timely theme for the season of creation, 1st of September to the 4th of October. Bishop Mark Stringer of Troyes, co-president of Pax Christi, said last month, Laudato Si is a monumental gift which would become more and more our charter in the post-coronavirus era. My charter is the book of Revelation. <laughs> And the words of our Lord throughout the entire Bible. That's my charter. That'll chart my path. Correct. There's a Lutheran World Federation, so it's not only a Catholic yeah. issue, saying exactly the same thing. Jubilee for the Earth invites us to consider the integral relationship between rest for the Earth and ecological, economic, social and political ways of living. This particular year, the need for just and sustainable systems has been revealed by the far-reaching effects of the global COVID-19 pandemic. So the churches have changed their gospel message into a Gaia message. That's it. That's what it leads to. Mm -hmm. leads to. And the European Sunday Alliance, the right to disconnect, and the need for European weekly common day of rest, invitation to the European Sunday Alliance webinar, 1st June 2021. Isn't it an agenda? Definitely. Hmm. So the webinar follows up from the recent activities on the right to disconnect, and aims to raise awareness on the need to establish at the EU level a weekly common day of rest for all EU citizens. Are the trade unions on board? Oh, yes. Definitely. One of the means to bring about a time of trouble such as never was. Who created them? The Roman Catholic Church. It's, it's, it's getting boring already, it? Isn't is, it is, because the thing is now, uh, you show all of this and still they say, oh, well, there's, no, there's, nothing there's nothing on the horizon. Nothing we can't on see the this. Horizon. There's nothing now. Well, here's Earth Beat from June 11, 2021. 102 faith leaders rally for 100% clean energy as key cog in Biden's job plan. That's interesting. That was the goal of organizers of a June 9 rally in Washington, D.C. to gather 100 pastors, rabbis, and other religious leaders to vocalize their support for President Joe Biden's job plan and to promise to establish a 100% clean energy standard for by the year 2035. Has there been a change in gospel proclamation? 
Yes. Martin, why would you be appointed as a pastor? To do what? What's the job of a pastor? To preach the gospel and make <laughs> disciples. Correct. More than 3,000 faith leaders signed a letter organized by Interfaith Power and Light urging Congress to back a clean energy standard, etc., etc. Signed by 100 pastors, professors, and evangelical leaders. Has the commission of the church been successfully changed? Yes. yes, the main mission is now climate oriented. Climate. So here we have the World Economic Forum, 11th of June 2021. The challenge for G7 leaders vaccinate the world and be bolder on climate. And they're all practicing social di distancing until the party here is over, then social distancing was no longer necessary. Correct. They were very, very buddy-buddy. We could show all those pictures, but we don't have no, to. No, we don't have to. We don't have to. So this is all a game, a charade. And here is a very interesting article from the tablet. As the G7 begins, the world needs climate Sundays and wild Christians more than ever. So now the Christian world has been integrated into the climate change, uh, change agenda. And that linked to the common good, that being linked to Sunday at its heart. All of it coming together. Yes. Nothing on the horizon? <laughs> and who sits behind all of this? Rome. Rome. This year, with the UK hosting critical UN international climate negotiations, COP26 in November. I'm looking forward to that date. This is becoming so interesting. <laughs> Christians in this country have a unique opportunity to influence if we act together. That's why A. Rocha UK has joined with nearly 30 other charities and denominations, including... CAFOD, Christian Aid, Church of England, Church of Scotland, Church of Wales, to run the Climate Sunday initiative. Martin? I don't know what to say anymore. There's nothing to say. Everything is there. It's a fulfillment of prophecy. People are so being kept busy by all this other nonsense that they don't see what's going on. And if you dare mention this, yes, you're... Conspiracy theorist. Exactly. <laughs> but this is not a conspiracy uh, theory. All the churches are on board. Yes. But the churches have been divested of their heart and it has been replaced with a pagan philosophy run by a pagan priesthood and their aim is to bring in Sunday legislation via the back door. Yeah. They don't even have to use Rome don't even have to push them themselves. No. So they're getting all these people to do it for, for them. them. So it's fascinating to me that people are staring at the front door waiting for something to come in. And meantime, the back door is wide open. It's probably already in. Exactly. So here, UN Climate Change Conference UK 2021. Uniting the world to tackle climate change. Now, this is what where we're heading. So the UK will host the 26th UN Climate Change Conference of the Parties COP26 in Glasgow on the 1st to the 12th of November 2021. The COP26 summit will bring parties together to accelerate action towards the goals of the Paris Agreement and the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. The UK is committed to working with all countries and joining forces with civil societies, companies and people in the front line of climate change to inspire climate action ahead of COP26. Did we just read that in the predictions made in the Sustainable Prince? Yes, 1998. They already said this is what's going to be. So now we're at the implementation stage. I'm wondering, Martin... 
Do you think we'll have a couple of climate calamities just before this? I think so. We had it before the, the previous one. Do you think we'll have some super hot days? Mm -hmm. Records. Maybe some record events taking place, storms, whatever. It's very probable. Very probable, right? So, Martin, we had this video before. We started off with it. We started off with it. At and the series. So, like a bookend, let's put it at the end. And let's hear from a Skull and Bones member, Chapter 322 of the Illuminati. John Kerry, one of those papal knights, to tell us exactly who is the man to be trusted in this issue. If I may, I just want to put in something. Just before people get excited about him being a Democrat. In the previous government, Bill Barr is a knight of Columbus. It doesn't matter on which side of the political spectrum they are, they still fall under Rome. Correct. So we'll play it again to create our bookend. You're on a, a very important uh, mission here to Europe. Can you tell us why is it important to include a visit with the Pope during your visit to, to Europe to talk about climate change? Well, the Pope is one of the great voices uh, of reason and compelling moral authority on the subject of the climate crisis. He's been ahead of the curve. He's been a leader. His encyclical Laudato Si is really a very, very powerful document, uh, eloquent and morally very persuasive. And I think that um, his voice will be a very important voice leading up to and through the Glasgow conference. How can the United States, as a superpower, and the Holy See as a much smaller country, but nonetheless as a moral and spiritual authority, uh, collaborate in the fight against climate change? Well, the Holy Father is, one, if, if not the, one of the most powerful voices on the planet. And he's been uh, extraordinary in the eloquence of his uh, call on people to, to, to step up and be reasonable and to live out our responsibility as human beings in caring for God's creation. Um, and, and we all have to be stewards of that creation. That's his message. Uh, but because he is above politics and outside of the hurly-burly of day-to-day -day, um, uh, national uh, conflict, etc., I think he can sort of, you know, shake people a little bit and bring them to the table with a better sense of our common obligation. And I think the Holy Father speaks with special authority to our sense of obligation to each other uh, and the ways in which uh, we need to all step up now together. Uh, given the divisions of the world and some of the polarization and uh, the ideology and conflict, um, that voice is more important than ever. So Martin, that voice is more important than ever. And I think we have done what we can to show what the real agenda is yes. of this organization. And I think we should close with this text from Isaiah, chapter 51. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner, but my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. The text is quite clear that the earth will wear out like a garment. It is coming to a close. Yes. And the idea of regenerating it back into its former glory is a vain idea because the course of history has come to a close. Now, I'm not propagating uh, environmental destruction. No. We have to do what we can because we are stewards of the earth. But the ultimate solution lies in salvation. My salvation shall be forever. 
and my righteousness shall not be abolished. That is unchangeable. Correct. Everything else is changeable. And it is time for humanity to choose sides. As for me and my house, and I'm sure yours yes. too, I think we will choose the salvation that is in Christ and leave the Gaia hypothesis and the pagan rituals mm -hmm. to those that wish to follow that route. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gospel of salvation. Thank you that there is an immovable rock. Thank you that there is an anchor that will never let go of its hold. Thank you, Lord, that you have shown us all these things in your word and that you have tried everything possible to prepare us for what lies ahead. Help us to make right choices. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you for watching this video. To subscribe, click here. When the bell appears, click again to get notifications. To watch the next video, click here. Thank you.